wanna see you. I don't wanna hear you tonight. Hey everyone, welcome back! It's been a bit. I'm sorry I missed the barrel video today, I wasn't around for it and forgot to announce in advance. Anyways, IRL has been a bit hectic so I've been out and about. Besides, the new Echoes of Veilbreaker update is more so a glorified hotfix, right? Today we're going to be looking at a quirky Neja build. The concept isn't exactly new, I've been juggling the idea for a few months now and couldn't come up with a way to make it synergize better. What is it? We are playing a negative strength Neja. Some of you may be familiar with the 10% Halo build, where we use the early Halo break for crowd control and a second layer of quasi shield gate that happens before our shields actually break. In exchange of decent damage reduction, we instead have a Halo gate. Why does this matter? It doesn't really, since Neja still has his own natural shield gate, but in content where your shields would otherwise break before Halo. This allows you to combine a 100% AoE heat proc and complete invulnerability to everything for one second. This is not strictly better or worse than standard Halo gameplay, but instead turns the Halo into an active tool for crowd control, instead of just a passive source of damage reduction. It is just another way to play Neja. It is neither a better nor a worse way. This also means this build today is not for everyone. There are consequences to using this setup on Neja, which we will dive into later. Halo, simply put, is a 90% damage reduction ability that has a health pool instead of a duration. Once the ring runs out of health, any remaining damage overflows into your own health and shields. This is important because the last hit that depletes the ring will only be partially mitigated. The remaining overflow damage will apply at 100% scaling to you both for the 1 second invulnerability of Halo breaking applies. If your shields are already depleted and shield gate already used, common on higher strength Neja builds, this overflow can instantly kill you when your Halo breaks at higher levels, and this is where the 10% Halo trick works. By dumping strength to ensure your Halo breaks before or with your shields, you turn the 1.3 second natural full shield gate into a shield gate that also pulses out an AoE 100% heat proc. Moreover, because Halo does not care about your actual shield gate, a 0.33 second partial shield gate from only having some shields regenerated will still get the full 1 second invulnerability from Halo breaking. You can recast Halo during this 1 second window as long as you have energy. Basically, you are running an upgraded shield gate Neja. This is normally what happens when you run Endurance Neja since enemies will simultaneously one-shot both his shield and Halo. But if you are comfortable with shield gating already and want to benefit from early Halo breaks, even a base steel path and a bit further on, this is the way to do it. This is the Neja build I used to accomplish the 10% Halo. It's actually a 12% Halo because I don't like his passive, so I ran controlled slide. Otherwise, you can skip this for whatever you want. Strength was dropped to 10% through power donation and overextended. Ironically, this is a zero forma Neja Prime. Neja actually doesn't need that many mods to survive and even less so on a shield gate and halo gate build that skimps on armor and health scaling. This lets us stack range or as you see here, even give up slots for gladiator mods to significantly boost the crit chance of our Zorus with a set bonus. The biggest problems with 10% Neja builds are the lack of helmet options that work with 10% strength. Every single armor strip, every single damage buff requires strength. The exceptions are grouping, support utilities like dispensary, and duration buffs with fixed benefits like energized munitions. Energize has no need for more support since he has ultimate crowd control, orb generation, damage reduction, and status immunity on his kit already. I chose Sickening Pulse to boost damage. Sickening Pulse does not care about strength and is minimally affected by range modding. It works perfectly fine on 100% duration as well. You could have picked grouping helmets, but we can achieve that with Magus Anomaly quite well already. We don't even need tight grouping on this loadout, so it's very comfortable to use. Because we're on a shield gate build and Neja himself spits out health orbs left and right on enemies' tag buys too, I would recommend using Magus Lockdown for your other Operator Arcane. This is handy for freezing Acolytes in place, the only weakness on Neja's kit, if you can even call it one. Blazing Chakram is all you need to generate an absurd amount of health and energy orbs to trigger Equilibrium. The damage vulnerability stat though is basically useless at the strength we use. It's also nearly impossible though to die on this build. Arcane Strike adds 60% attack speed to throwing our Zorus since we won't be using an attack speed mod on it today. 
This essentially replaces Primed Fury, energizes for support so you don't have to always cast Blazing Chakram, and in theory you could replace this with something else. You can also put Sickening over Chakram instead if you want to keep Firewalker for the persistent, small crowd control. Sickening Pulse adds 10 stacks of any pre-existing status, with each stack doing equal to all the previous combined. In theory, this suggests 11 times damage scaling, or in the case of Slash, Heat, and Toxin, adding one proc that does the same damage as all the other procs combined, resulting in only doubled damage. For Gas, it is capped to 10 stacks, so you don't get the full extra 10 stacks since you would have at least one already. Also, don't cast Sickening Pulse twice for Gas, because it reduces the damage of Dots down to 1. But Sickening Pulse on Electric and Gas doesn't actually add 10 times damage. Sickening Pulse ignores all elemental damage mods on your weapon, and only applies Banes once instead of twice. This Zorus has 60% Electric modded on it and a Primed Bane. A natural electric proc does 275 damage. The separate tick added by Sickening Pulse, despite adding 10 electric procs, is only 1109. Why? Sickening Pulse ignores our 60% electric mod, so that 275 proc is actually now 172. And it only single dips Banes instead of double dipping, so that 172 gets divided by 1.55, which is 110.9. And what is 10 stacks of 110.9? 1,109. On the setup today, Sickening Pulse increases Azorus damage by roughly 5 times, going from 275 to 275 plus 1109 for 1,384 damage. If you're not intending to bring this into longer runs, feel free to try Air Burst, Larva, Coil Horizon, or any other grouping tool you want. Whether you group enemies up with Mega's Anomaly or your helmet, throwing a Zorus at them nukes them instantly. Sickening Pulse inflicts 2 million chaining electric dots per tick to these 20 level 165 Drake Hermetic Bombards with full armor scaling. 100k per enemy and they all hit each other. Without Viral, it's still 25k per enemy for 500k per chaining tick. With Air Burst or any other grouping ragdoll instead of Sickening Pulse, you still land 26k per Dracar after Viral proccing. I would strongly recommend priming with Viral first regardless of your helmet choice today. Let's look at that Zorus build. This is a 12x Zorus. It should be easy to build combo up with anomaly grouping and Zorus having infinite combo duration makes it easy to use. Because Sickening Pulse ignores elemental mods on weapons outside of heat setups, the only electric mod on this build is Focus Energy. This mod is actually here to reach 90% heavy efficiency since Zorus is already electric anyways. Normally you wouldn't put this on most melees because the bonus electric screws up elemental waiting for status procs. But Glaives have force procs and Zorus in particular has force proc electric. This is the solution to Intermite on Xenoric no longer granting heavy efficiency. Otherwise, you could have slotted Blood Rush here for red crits on Zorus. It drops base electric procs from 6k to 5.5k, but after Sickening Pulse goes from 26 to 35. I would not consider this worth it since 90% heavy efficiency is significantly better than 60% for quality of life, even if you get more damage. If you choose to use a Glaive Prime instead for slash procs, the same build logic applies. The reason I chose Zorus today for 2 hour survival runs or for up to level 600 is because of its massive AoE. Zorus has the largest AoE of any Glaive in the game at base 9 meters, and Volatile Quick Return increases this to 12 meters, or larger than any launcher post-primed Firestorm nerfs. Bigger AoE means more kills per throw, simple as that. Glaive Prime with his 4 slash procs would still reign king though for level 9k, due to completely bypassing armor unless you bring Uneru. However, it only reaches 7.8 meter radius on the AoE. Keep in mind, Glaives have zero falloff unlike AoE launchers. Zorus covers a 2.36 times larger area than Glaive Prime, and we only consider the 2D flat disc hitbox instead of the spherical area. If you have a more vertical tile, which is not good for KPM though, the Zorus explosion covers 3.64 times more volume than Glaive Prime. Therefore, up to level 600, I can confidently say the Zorus, even without armor strip, would perform better than Glaive Prime on the setup. Epitaph Primer build is whatever you want, just make sure it has Viral on it. I made mine Radiation Viral to crowd control enemies even better by making them shoot each other. The Force Cold procs from Epitaph also slows enemies down while easily setting them up with Viral to be blown up. 
any kind of ammo mutation is good enough, the primed variant isn't needed. Because Zorus has an infinite combo duration, your weapon arcane on Epitaph also doesn't matter. Your primary can also be whatever you want, it only serves as an amalgam serration sprint speed stat stick on the setup. You can bring a weapon to kill acolytes in this slot if you want like a Fenmore, but the thing is, a 12x heavy Zorus makes a massive dent in acolyte HP. Casting Sickening Pulse afterwards will max out Acolyte stacks to 4 electric procs and is enough to kill them outright without having to hit them again. Uneru is here for if you want to bring this Neja Zorus build to level 9k. Caustic Strike solves the armor issue and allows Zorus to shine compared to the Glade Prime with its 12 meter explosion radius. The chain range of electric procs can also extend past the 12 meters to kill other enemies. Access to Caustic Strike also makes it super easy to revive yourself if Neja goes down. Just strip armor from enemies using Caustic Strike and blow them up with the amp part of your choosing. Or strip shields with the Magnetic Flare if it's Corpus. Otherwise, use whatever focus school you're most comfortable with. Unero also means you're completely immune to transference static and cannot be killed by your operator dying too many times while your Warframe is alive. How the build plays? Easy, just cast Halo. Go blow, enemies up. If your Halo breaks, you can either roll in guard or cast your 4. Casting your 4 is very handy because it stops enemies from hitting you when you recast your ring, preventing it from building any extra health. Either way, rolling guard remains useful against acolytes, particularly violence, or when you walk into a nullifier bubble or an Xmas breaks your ring and applies a nasty dawn. Use anomaly as needed for loose grouping and throw your 12 times Zorus to blow everything up. At base steel path, the sheer damage of a 12x Zorus in tighter enemies will usually one-shot them instantly. This is where a grouping helmet might be more convenient, but for level, say, 600 content, that sickening pulse will become handy to instantly multiply your damage by 5 and continue ripping everything apart. Hope you like the 10% Halo Neja. Cheers! If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible. Like I'm done with covering the Veilbreaker updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.